So the next potential use of castor oil is for constipation. And it is FDA approved as a stimulant laxative and in some areas of the world is used as an effective bowel prep pre-colonoscopy. And this is because castor oil activates smooth muscle receptors in the gut and stimulates the bowels to contract. Now, that being said, I wouldn't recommend castor oil as a go-to for constipation. I would think of it more as a, I'm backed up, I need some sort of on occasion aid to kind of clean me out. But given that other therapeutics have more of a corrective effect with other side benefits, I think you're best using probiotics first, psyllium or some other sort of fiber first, perhaps modified citrus pectin, magnesium citrate, or senna. You could use castor oil for constipation, but again, I think on an as needed basis, just given that it's more of a purging oil than it is something that's truly corrective for constipation. We discussed a moment ago the antimicrobial action that castor oil has. And so this begs a few questions about microbes and in this case, candida. It has been demonstrated that castor oil is anti-candida, at least in vitro. There's no research on toenail fungus or on yeast infections. However, people anecdotally do report benefit from using castor oil in these applications. Now, as it pertains to nail fungus, whether it's toe or hands, I think it's worth a trial putting castor oil on a nail and seeing if you notice the benefit after a period of time. As it pertains to yeast, let's say a use case of vaginal yeast. Given that we've covered on the, pa on, on the show in the past that garlic capsules were as effective for vaginal yeast as the drug fluconazole, I think there are probably better options to use first for candida than castor oil. So again, I think you could try it in the application as an antimicrobial, but there are other agents that are probably going to be more effective. 